Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for May 17th, 2024. There is a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself using the same Sudoku Pad software I do, which does have some features that the New York Times built-in solver doesn't have. So if you want to follow along, I do recommend using that. It is free. And uh, I'm going to get started right now. But I do for my medium solves, I do not assume too much about your Sudoku knowledge. Uh, so um, I do want to go over some terminology, and I will be going over every technique I use as if you haven't experienced it before. I'm also going to go over a very systematic strategy to approaching the solve, which uh, should be helpful for those who haven't encountered it before. Okay, and it's not just systematic, it's, it's enjoyable, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, but it is a bit more systematic than than I would approach a solve, but it does go over the uh, the basic ideas very well to, to, to do them in order like that. So I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, let's go over some terminology here. I call these cells. You will encounter slightly different names depending on who you ask, but these are very, very common names, and I didn't make these up. Just be clear, I had that question before. Um, and so these are cells. There's 81 of them in the grid. The grid is a nine by nine grid of cells, and every cell will end up with a digit in it, a digit from one to nine. You can see that some of them are already pre-filled. That makes every puzzle different. Uh, there is only one correct way to fill every cell with a digit. So we are not going to be guessing because we need to find the one correct answer to the puzzle. All right. Additionally, we do have a horizontal line of cells that we call that a row. A vertical line of cells is called a column, and a three by three um, area of cells that is bold outlined is called a box. So this three by three area is not a box, but this three by three and this three by three are, because these are actually denoted with a bold outlined region. Okay, now what's special about rows, columns, and boxes is we have to place one of each of the digits one to nine. So this row already has a four in it that's been pre-placed for us, which means we can't put another four. So basically, we're going to end up with one of each of one to nine uh, in this row, for example. But we don't know where the remaining digits go. We only know where the given digits go. These are called given digits, in case you're curious. Um, additionally, um, I'm going to be talking about bands and stacks. Those don't have any special function within the Sudoku rules, uh, but they are useful structures to think about. So a band is a row of three boxes. And a stack is a column of three boxes. All right, so now let's get started on our actual solve. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about each band individually. And the idea is that we can focus on just what's going on in the band first and get some information uh, about the puzzle. We can extract some information from the puzzle. And in doing so, um, we can more easily get some of what I call the low hanging fruit. So, what are we going to look for in a band? Well, the first thing to think about is how many of each digit do we expect to find in a band? And the answer is three of each digit, because it is made up of three rows. It's also made up of three boxes. Either way, each of those has one of each digit. And since there are three of them, we end up with three of each digit. But we can't place them anywhere in the band. They're, we start getting restricted where we can place them in the band. So the first thing I want you to do is look for where we have two out of the three digits placed. And that third digit will be restricted to only three cells. Uh, remaining that it can go in at most. So for example, there are two sevens in this band. And when if we look, there's a few ways to prove this, but let's talk about it just more holistically first, because um, I feel like that should give you an idea of how we like to think about Sudoku in certain ways. Um, but holistically, we need three sevens in this band. One of them will be in row one, one will be in row two, one will be in row three. So we know where the one in row two and row three are, but we don't know where the one in row one is. Sorry, we don't know where the seven in row one is, I should say. Um, and so the, set, the, the final seven will be in row one. But also, we need one in box one, one in box two, and one in box three. So the seven in box one and the seven in box three is known, so the final seven should also be in box two. So if the seven needs to be in row one and it needs to be in box two, it has to be in the intersection of those two. And so it ends up in one of these three cells. Now we can prove that a bit more directly, and this is how I'm going to be doing it from now on, because uh, that's, that's a lot to, to think about. But I wanted, I wanted to make sure we understood kind of how the bands kind of form and, and how they restrict where digits can go. Um, and so the way I'm going to be demonstrating this is box two still needs a seven. 
It cannot be in row two because there's already a seven in row two and we can't repeat the seven. It also can't be in row three because there's already a seven in row three and we can't repeat that seven. Therefore, it's in one of these three cells. So there is a seven here, but I like the previous explanation in that it gives us the additional context that there need to be three sevens in total in the band and the last one is restricted and where it can go. All right, now in addition to that, this six here is a given six telling us that the seven doesn't go there. Now this is the only time we're gonna look down and we're gonna look for sevens here. Now we do have a seven, but it, it overlaps with the six, right? So the seven also tells us this can't be seven. So actually what we've done is we've reduced the seven to be two places in this box. This box needs a seven, and there are only two cells that can be seven. Now we can't just guess. Remember I said at the start, we're not gonna be guessing. There'll be a 50% chance to be wrong, and that's, that's bad, especially if we're guessing a bunch. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the corner mark mode to remember that seven goes in one of these two cells. The Stokepad software I have has corner mark and center mark. You can probably guess which is which. Uh, the corners go in the corner, the center goes in the center. So we're going to use corner marks. And what that's always going to mean is that within a box, we have reduced that digit to this list of cells. So the seven in this case has been reduced to the, these two cells. Now we're not going to just randomly corner mark everything. We're only going to corner mark if we have discovered that within a box, a digit has been reduced to two cells, uh, no matter where they are, or three cells if they're all in a row or all in a call. Okay, so these, these sevens have been reduced to two places in the box, so we corner mark that. Now that's always going to happen. We're always going to be able to corner mark or place the digit it, uh, when we find two out of the three in a band, and that's why we're looking for that. Now we want to find all of them, so my recommendation is to compare box one against box two, box one against box three, and box two against box three. That way we don't miss any. Now I would recommend starting with the box with the fewest givens in it, in this case the six. We look in this box for a six and this box for a six. We don't see any. And now we just have to compare these two boxes against each other. Again, we can just pick one with the fewest givens. Three, four, seven, eight. Look over here for three, four, seven, eight. We see we have the three and the seven. We already did the seven, but we have not done the three. So these threes look in, this three looks up. We end up with three in one of these two cells. All right, and now we're, we're assured that we have found all of the duplicate digits in the band. Before we move on to the next band, there are two things I want you to look for, which sometimes happen and sometimes don't. First is a filled box row. Box row just being the term for the three cells that are in a row in a box. So this is a box row, 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 etc. Uh, look at each box row and see if there's any filled. That should be very easy to just see. Um, by filled, I mean we know what the three digits that go in that box row are. We know the exact three digits that go there. Uh, we don't know that for any of these. Um, additionally, uh, look for if you have uh, reduced a row or box to four or fewer open cells. So for example, this row has five open cells, though that's bigger than four, so we ignore it. So we don't have any of that in this band. So we just got that three and seven, and then we move on. We move on to this um, band here. This band's kind of interesting. Uh, so I'm looking for 139 over here. There's a one, so we have duplicate ones. This one looks up, puts a one in one of these two. Now, do we have any filled box rows? We have two of them. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna be looking at, let, let's focus on this box row here. This is a little bit weird because this row's almost done. But uh, we look at this box row here and we look for any digits that are not in the row and not in the box, right? So there's gonna be 12 cells as candidates for that. And we don't know of any digits there, so that's not helpful. Same with this. Any digits not in the row, not in the box. The one is the only one that could have been, but unfortunately it's already in the, in the box. So we can't do anything with that. But if we did, we'd be able to have, like, restrict that digit. Um, and then finally, any rows or boxes down to four or fewer? Well, yeah, this row is down to three open cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to center mark what those three digits can be. Now center marks, let's go over, first let's go over this, right? The row needs all nine digits. It has six of them. So what are the three that are remaining? Well, they are the six, seven, eight. And so we know that somewhere in these three cells, we're going to be putting a six, a seven, and an eight, but we don't know what order it goes in. So I'm going to use six, seven, eight. I'm going to use center marks for that. We can clean up this eight because this can't be eight. And we can clean up this seven because this can't be seven. Now, what a center mark means is it is a cell centric. Remember that our corner marks were dealing with a row uh, with, with the box, right? The corner marks deal with the box. The, the center marks deal with the individual cell and they say, hey, this is the exhaustive list of digits that can go in this cell. So in this case, this cell, we know in the, in the solution, this cell will be a six or a seven. We don't know which, but we know it's exactly one of those two. So knowing that is extremely helpful. Um, and so this makes a six, seven, eight triple. 
And what this is going to do is um, it's called a naked triple. And naked is a term that we're going to use to refer to um, when we're using the center marks, when we're using the candidate list for a specific number of cells. So it's a triple, so we're using three cells. So what can, what can we say about these three cells? Well, we can say a lot, but one thing we can say is that there are three distinct digits in them because I can't repeat any. I can't put two sixes here, right? Because they share a row, they share a box. Um, and so they're going to end up with three different digits in them, which means they're going to use the six, seven, and eight because there's nothing else they can use. So the six, seven, and eight will end up in these three cells somewhere. Now, these three cells don't just share a row, they also share a box. And because they share this box, the rest of the box doesn't care how the six, seven, eight resolve. Whether I mean, this could be six, eight, seven, or we could do seven, uh, six, eight, or we could do, you know, seven, eight, six. You know, there's a lot of options. But however it is, we're going to have six, seven, eight here, which means we're not going to have six, seven, eight in any cell that can't repeat with all three. So these, these cells here will not be able to be six, seven, eight. So they'll be one, two, three, four, five, nine. Um, that's not immediately useful for us to use, but it is, it is something important to understand about naked triples. Um, all right. And so, for example, these cells can't be six, seven, eight anymore. They, could, they already couldn't be eight, but now they can't be six or seven, which could be useful to know in the future. Um, in fact, I am noticing something about this column, which I will point out. Um, which is, remember I said that the, these two cells couldn't be 6, 7, right? Um, well, also these cells can't be 7, because we have a 7 here. So 7 can't go in these cells because of this 7. It also just happens to not be down here. And this 6, 7, 8 triple removes 7 from these two cells. So where does the 7 go in this column? And the answer is it can only go here. So we're going to place that 7. That's called a hidden single. Now, hidden is a term we'll use to mean that we looked at a row, column, or box, and we discovered something about the list of cells that a digit could be in, or some number of digits could be in. In this case, it's a single, so it was one digit and one cell. So we looked at this column, and we said there's only one cell that can have a digit, so it must have that digit. Uh, and so that's called a hidden single for that reason. Um, and so hidden singles allow you to place digits. Now, we're not going to stop here because now we know these can't be six, and now this can't be six because it ended up seven. And this six, eight pair removes six from these. These aren't six. And this six here takes six out of this cell. So actually there's only one place in this column for six. So there's a hidden single six in the column as well. Now this column already has an eight. So I think we're, we've, we've exhausted what we can do there. But we did place the six. And so what we want to do is we want to follow up on that. We see that this six here. Um, is also there now. And so these sixes look into this box. Let me get a hidden single six in the box so we can place that six. We also had looked previously for rows and boxes down to four or fewer digits. Uh, now we have two of those. We have this box and we have this row. So just pick one. What I want you to do is think about what the digits are. They are the one, two, um, five, and nine. One, two, five, nine. And I'm looking for one, two, five, nine down here. I'm seeing a little bit of it. So for example, this cell sees one and five. So if one, two, five, nine are the digits remaining for this box, and this can't be one, five, then this cell can only be two, nine. So we can center mark that. This cell can't be two, so it's down to one, five, nine. Now these can be all of one, two, five, nine. Now one, one rule that I'll say is, you know, well, you're welcome to break it, but I do not recommend center marking uh, when there are more than three options in the cell. Three is kind of our max. We don't want to clutter the grid with a ton of center marks. We're not interested in center marking every single cell. Um, only the cells that are down to three or fewer digits and when we discover them, we're not hunting for them. So in this case, we found it because this box was down to four or fewer, which gave it a very high probability of having cells down to three or fewer. So this is two nine, this is one five nine. Nothing to do immediately with that, but it is useful to know. Um, this row, we think about what it's down to, the one, four, five, and eight. Um, and we're looking for one, four, fives, and eights. I see the one, five here. So this is down to four, eight only. And I don't see any other one, four, five, eights that we can deal with. Um, I also noticed this box is down to four digits. So it is down to the one, four, five, eight as well. This can't be the one, so it's, and it can't be the eight. In fact, the eight isn't in any of these cells. So that's the first thing I'm going to focus on because this is interesting because it put, it means eights in one of these two cells. So we can actually corner mark that now. Now this does something, this is a technique we haven't used yet in this puzzle. 
It's called pointing. So the name is less important than the logic, but the logic goes like this. In this box, we have reduced eight to two cells. So eight will end up here, or it will end up here. Guaranteed, one of those two, there's not a third option. Does this cell care where the eight ends up? And the answer is no, if the eight is here, this cell can't be eight. Okay, well, what if the eight is here? Well, this cell can't, still can't be eight, because these share a column. So there will be an eight in, in the column seven here, and it will be in one of these two cells, which means the rest of the column cannot be eight. The result of that is that we can eliminate eight from the rest of the column. And it's called pointing because if you drew a line and then like an arrowhead along the, along the cells that can be eight in this box, they would point at the rest of the column and say, hey, no more eights. And so this can't be eight, so this has to be six. So just go over that slowly, it can't be eight. So now the total list, of the complete list of possible digits the cell can be is six. It can't be any other digit, and it needs to be a digit, so it will be six. So we put the six there, and then that, le that means that this cell can only be eight, we put the eight there. We've actually finished this whole row. Um, so cool, that's the consequence of getting that eight there. We actually filled this. Remember, we're still just scanning this band. The reason we looked at this six and this seven in general is because we had found this six, seven, eight triple, and we had found that it restricts these cells and noticed that it was really interesting for the column. So it's okay to, to look at the consequences of what you found right away um, and see if there's any interesting immediate deductions you can make. All right, so in addition to that, we know these are gonna be down to three digits because they can't be eight. So the digits that they were down to was uh, one, four, five, and eight. Um, very interesting. So yeah, okay, okay, so the other thing I didn't notice is we do still need a four in this box. So let's do that first. So this four tells us the four can't be here. So we can corner mark the four here as well, and it's, it is gonna point as well. But actually, what we found here is more powerful. What we found is a hidden four, eight pair. Remember hidden, we were always gonna be talking about a row, column, or box. So in this case, it's a hidden four, eight pair in box three. So we're looking at this box, and the pair is telling us where two digits have been reduced to the same two cells. So in this case, the four and the eight can only be in these two cells. We cannot put a four or an eight up here. So the result of that is that these cells must be four, eight, if because we need to fit both the four and eight in the box. That means they're gonna use two cells, and those are the only two cells available. So we can actually mark this with center marks as a four, eight pair. And that does make a naked four, eight pair. It's very similar to the six, seven, eight hit, uh, naked triple we found. So that means the rest of the column can't be four, eight, and also means the rest of the box can't be four, eight. We already knew that, but it is uh, telling us that as well. And so these are the two digits that remain. Uh, one of them's a one. This one tells us it's not here, so that's the one. And then the other digit's a five. Now this one does remove this corner mark one, which then tells us that we have a hidden single one in the box because there's only one cell that can be one in this box based on our corner marks, so that cell is one. Very nice. Okay, the other thing that we just that I want you to notice is that this also gave us a naked four eight pair in this row. And so this naked four eight pair here eliminates four and eight from these two cells. And so these are the other two digits for the row. These are the one and the five. And I'm looking down here for ones or fives, not seeing it, but we can put the one five pair in here. Now this one five pair also eliminates one and five from the rest of this box. Now these already couldn't be one five, but now these aren't one five. And so I want, I'm hoping you see something here. If not, um, I will point it out, which is that because these can't be one five anymore, that triggers us to think about one five for this row. And we notice that these are not one five, and we notice this isn't one five. And so for this row, the one five end up here only. You can also see it for the box if you want. We have a one five here looking up, we have a one five here looking in. These aren't one five. So there are only two cells also in the box that can be one five. Luckily it agrees with the row. Um, and so that means that this can't be nine. This is only one five and this is only one five. So it can't be nine because we need to put one and five here. If we tried to put a nine here, we wouldn't be able to fit both one and five in the box or in this row and that's no good. So that's one five and that leaves two nine behind. So these are two nine. Oops, meant to center mark that. These are two nine. So we end up with this two nine pair. Now these, this two nine pair, it does affect the box technically, but we already have that. Um, it doesn't affect a row or a column because they do not share a row or a column. So even though one of them will be two and one of them will be nine, it doesn't have an immediate effect on the row or the column. I am seeing that this row here though is down to three digits, two, seven, nine. So I'm just gonna mark that. And we can see that this cell here can't be the two or the nine. 
So it is actually a naked single 7. We can place that. That means this one's not a 7. Notice this place does a 7. I get this question sometimes, so I'll go over that. This place does a 7, even though there were two places that could be 7 in this box. So why can we justify this being 7? Well, ignore the, ignore the corner marks. We're not worried about the corner marks right now. We're worried about what this cell individually can even be. And the only digit it can be is a 7. We have to put a digit in here, right? Can I put a 1? The answer is no, there's a 1 in the row. Can I put a 2? The answer is no, there's a 2 in the column. I can't put a 3. I can't put a 4. I can't put a 5. I can't put a 6. I can't put an 8. And I can't put a 9. So if I'm going to put a digit in here, it better be the 7 or it's going to be nothing. So we have to put the 7 there. So that actually cleans up that 7. Um, now, let's see. I don't know that these are worth thinking about. Maybe this cell is worth thinking about just because we are down to, we have these threes corner marks, so this isn't a three. Um, but you know what, let's not worry about that right now. Um, so this band we, we've, we've gotten quite a bit out of. Uh, we were looking at this band. Um, let's double check that the six, seven, eight didn't help the band. It doesn't seem to. So I think there's still not much more to do with this band. So we're gonna move on to the, the final band down here. Uh, we have this eight, so we're gonna compare it against these two boxes. We do have this eight here. And that does place eight in this box, which is quite convenient. Um, and so then now uh, we compare these boxes against each other. We've got the 1, 3, and 5. Again, we already took care of 8, so we don't worry about it. 1, 3, and 5. We do have the duplicate 5. These look in. We look up here for 5s. We see one here. And so 5 ends up in one of these two cells. All right, and so that is all of the duplicates. But now we do have a filled box row. So what we want to do is we want to look at these, and we want to look for any digits that aren't in the box. Unfortunately, we only have 5s and 8s, so no go there. Um, this box has been reduced to four digits. So what are those digits? We need the one. We see this one here looking down. So one's in one of these two. Oops. Now, if one is in one of these two, that points. It points up and says this can't be one. Neither of these can be one. So this ends up only five, which then makes this only one. So we have naked single five, naked single one. We do want to look at the band real quick to see if that affected it, but it was already a one five pair horizontally, so I knew it wouldn't. Um, but getting the one and the five, did that help get buddies, right? So we have a buddy here now, these ones, but we also have a buddy five here. Um, we haven't scanned this stack, but if you want, you can still just put the corner mark in if you want. Um, but that back down here, we were looking at what this could be. So one, three, we also have the three here. So there's a three in one of these two. And that is going to point up removing this three corner mark. And that means there's only one place left in this box that can be three. So it must be. All right. Uh, we also have the four. The four can be anywhere, but we already know the ones here and the threes here, so it's safe to center mark the rest. This is four, and the final digit's a nine. So we end up with uh, with all four of them having three digits remaining, but the pointing ones and pointing threes were quite useful. Now placing this three, we have reduced this box to four, four digits, the two, four, eight, nine. So we're gonna look to see if those are restricted, um, and I am not seeing how two, four, eight, nine are restricted at all, um, and so we are not going to pencil those because it's four digits each. All right, so that was that box. Um, any uh, This row is down to four uh, open cells, so let's think about it. We need the two, four, uh, what did I miss? Two, four, six, and nine. Um, so I am seeing uh, that this sees a four, eight pair, so this can't be four. So this is two, and it can't be a six either, so it's two, nine only. Now this is something I want you to start recognizing as well, which is that we had four open cells in this row, and only one of them isn't in the same box right? We have four digits. This one's kind of, one of these things is not like the others, right? These three are in the same box, and this one's kind of outside of it. And this outside of it one couldn't be all the digits. What couldn't it be? Well, it couldn't be a four, and it couldn't be a six, which means that the four and six end up in these three cells. And because they share a box, I can corner mark four and six. Now, if you look, we do have these two fours, removing four from these two cells. And so actually, there's only one place for four in the box, which is right here. Um, now, this is called claiming. Um, so I guess we're, we're talking about the row, right? There's only one place for four in the row. The box could, could have four in one of these three. But this row can only have four right here. But let's, let's say four could be in more places. Let's talk about this four, six in general first, because I want to talk about claiming. It's very similar to pointing. This row needs a four and a six. And all of the cells that can be four, six are limited to the same box which means that that will be the four or six, four and six for the box as well. Let's just talk about the four alone, just to keep from confusion. I don't, I don't want to keep saying four and six. 
The four in this row was reduced, pretend these fours weren't here, is reduced to these three cells. Wherever the four ends up, it'll also be in this box, meaning these cannot also be four. So even though we thought we could put four somewhere down here, we actually can't because if we did, we wouldn't be able to put a four on the row. This is called claiming. It's very similar to pointing, um, but it's not called pointing because it's kind of the reverse. Um, and so actually, because these two can't be four, there is actually only one place for four in the row and only one place for four in the box after claiming. And so the four ends up here. And now there's only one place for six in the row because of the six. And so the six ends up there. And now this is two or nine only for the row, and it can't be two. So that's a nine, that's a two. So we actually finish the whole row by thinking about it. Okay, now this box has been reduced to four or fewer. Um, first, we want to look for duplicates. Um, we want to look for buddies. So we place the, the, all of these digits, right? So the two has a buddy, and that places the two in this box. Very nice. That looks up, re, re, and it uh, resolves this two nine pair, which resolves this nine as well. It reduces this box to three open cells, so it's safe to, to pencil it. Um, it's going to be the 248. We know the two is in one of these two. You're welcome to corner market if you'd like to. You don't have to, though. This nine that we, pl we placed removed nine from these two cells, and that leaves a three, four pair, a naked three, four pair, meaning these can't be four, and so that leaves one nine here. And so now that this is a three, four pair, it affects the column and says that these can't be four. Well, that means that the four ends up here, which puts the two here and the eight here. Now notice I did that with hidden singles. You can also do it with naked singles because the three, four pair removes four from these two. And now this is a naked eight, this is a naked two, this is a naked four. This is kind of your introduction to the fact that naked and hidden techniques are two sides of the same coin. If you find one, you're gonna find another. Anyway, this eight looks in giving us this four and this eight. All right, so we almost finished this band now. This four and eight uh, we'll deal with when we do this stack. Um, in fact, we were just still looking at this band, if I recall. We haven't even done stacks yet. Uh, but we are close to finishing this puzzle at this point. Um, but let's keep looking at this band. So we got the nine, we got the four, six, and nine as well. We're looking to see if that affected this band. Um, it didn't, um, not at least not any more than it has already. Um, and we're gonna think about all of the cells left in this band because they are down to four in the boxes. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, let's do this box first. Um, let's do four. So it needs a four. This four. Notice that when, when, the reason we think about it first is we're scanning up to, and we're scanning around to see if there's a specific limitation that's interesting, right? We don't want to just center mark it and then figure that out. I, I think it's nicer to think about the digits first. So four ends up in one of these two cells. And what, if you want, you can follow up on that vertically and say that means four is in one of these two. But we already know this is a pair anyway. We'll get to that. Um, and so, uh, so we needed the four. Um, we need six as well, and this six looks down. This six looks in. So actually there's a hidden single six in the box. That's a six, that's a four. That resolves this three, four here. The three now has a buddy. This three looks down. That puts a three in one of these two, which means this is a hidden three, five pair. Well, if that's a hidden three, five pair, what's this? Uh, one of them's a one, and this one says not here. So that's a one. That gives us the nine and the one. It also gives us the last digit for this box, which is something, looks like a seven. This uh, one we placed also gives us five and one here. This whole band's done. This five looks back down, giving us three and five. All right, two digits left for this box. What are they? Um, they are the seven and the nine. We know that this seven says that's nine, that's seven. So we have two bands done. When you have two bands done, you are done with the puzzle. The rest is just gonna resolve itself. Um, but let, we can think vertically to, to do so if you like. First of all, this column has only one digit to place. Whenever you discover that anywhere, just fill the digit. Um, so this is whatever whatever it is. Um, looks like the nine. Nope, I missed something. I, I tried to go through the digits in order, but I missed something. It's the six. Tried to do it while I was talking, which doesn't help. So that's the six. Um, that does mean there's a six here as well. It's the only place in the box for six. This column, um, it needs um, a five. So we place the five. That places the five in this box as well. All right, so um, I think it's easiest just to think about what digits are left. Look how th this, this puzzle's done. Uh, we need a three, so this three looks in. So we can just center mark as we go. That's the, where the three goes. Uh, we need seven, uh, eight, and nine. Now I see that this nine looks in as well, so this is a three, nine pair. This is gonna be seven, eight. Um, this digit's done, we should have done that first, um, but I didn't see it. We need a four, so that four goes there. This is also done. 
it's hard to scan columns when I have it. It's very large on my screen. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need a seven. That gives us the eight and the seven here. This pair is going to be uh, two and eight. So this eight tells us that this is the two and this is the eight. Um, let's just think about what this box needs. It does need a two. So the two ends up somewhere. In, oh no, sorry. I, I didn't. I was like, there ought to be a two and I didn't see it. So the two ends up there. Uh, we need a three, which goes there, which gives us the nine and the three. Uh, we do need a four, which goes there and the last digit's a nine. All right. Cool. So that puzzle collapsed really quickly. Um, I think it might have to do with the fact that I did use this six, seven, eight triple to great effect to uh, get the six and the seven in this column. Um, I think that was a really important spot for this puzzle. But do feel free to let me know. Let me know if you saw that. And I hope that this was um, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, again, I, I'm trying to target people who are new to Sudoku, trying to learn some of the techniques um, in a way that's going to keep be fun and sustainable. So let me know how you did. And of course, if you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.